As you heard, I'm a psychotherapist. I work with children, teenagers, and adults who have issues with screen, so social media, video games, television issues, uh, management. Most of the time, I consult with families who are suffering from um, poor communication, emotional breakdown, or tensions. Those family members are trying to reconnect, are hoping to reconnect with each other. Tonight, I would like to explain how it's useful to talk about video games and how we should help young ones deal with video games. Most of the time, parents are annoyed that they cannot communicate well with their children anymore. After chatting with the teenagers, they usually admit that they also want to spend some time with the parents. But not too much, you know, they are still teenagers. But at least enough to have good time together. The problem is, if you try to explain a video game to someone who doesn't play it, it could be very confusing. In my clinical practice and school interventions, I've observed that playing video games has definitely become the norm. However, young people have little opportunity to talk about what they really do, they actually do on the screens in this other world. It has become an educational challenge for parents to join in with the children as they dive into the digital world. Yet, the parent guidance is crucial nowadays because our youngsters have to learn how to manage the habits in preparation for adulthood. But why spend so much time on a game? I'm not talking about addiction, but merely the compulsive need to play video games is, in my opinion, more of a symptom rather than a pathology. The excessive investment in video games means something to me. It's like a call to understand and to discover what problem hides beneath. These cases are often linked to unhealthy self-esteem, to lack of, at intention, of attention, and sometimes to early hints of depression. This is Aiden, a 15 years old boy. But this is also Aiden. He consults me in my practice, accompanied by his parents, because the latter complained that the boy spent too much time playing the video game Fortnite. In, from his perspective, Aiden does not believe that Fortnite is an obstacle. He just wants his parents to let him be, and um, he thinks that, he also thinks that talking about Fortnite with his parents is impossible or even risky. The truth is, in Aiden's mind, each time the subject of Fortnite is brought at the dinner table is in, in the middle of a quarrel. You have to study. It's time to go to bed. I've told you already four times. And moreover, your game is stupid. <laughs> Unfortunately, Aiden is uh, has trouble getting a, a feeling of self-worth at school. But in Fortnite, he is pretty good. And he loves to spend time in the game where he meets his friends who admire him for his gaming skills. As a result, Aiden develops the tendency to play more than he should. Aiden's biggest problem is then feeling misunderstood. So here I am. As a psychotherapist, I have to listen to what the parents have to say. But I have also to listen to what Aiden is trying to tell us. Of course, Aiden's parents are right to worry about school and limits. That's normal. But what would happen if Aiden could express about what he feels when he plays Fortnite, about his accomplishments, 
And what about what if he didn't feel anxious about telling why he loves to play the game? Aiden starts a game where he meets three of his friends, and together they will try to defeat the 96 other players by creating strategies, communicating with each other, by working together, and yes, occasionally by shooting at anything that moves. <laughs> Aidan, who has trouble, or has difficulty to feel valued, has invested his time and efforts in a discipline in which he is competent, but in which he also receives criticism from his parents. As in this, in this sense, video game is not an enemy to fight against. It's rather a resource for us adults to understand what Aiden is really seeking. If Aiden broke a leg, a cast would be applied and we would have taught him to walk with crutches. A rehabilitation would have helped him to progressively give up the crutches. Sometimes, a video game can take the role of crutches. It is then essential that we understand how it works so we can help the player progressively reduce it. Indeed, a gamer, no matter the age, will express will ex experiences a diverse range of emotions in front of the screen. But taken by the euphoria of the game, they are not always um, uh, aware of those emotions. On the other hand, a parent will worry if he sees his child reacting aggressively. It is then delusive to think that children or teenagers know by their own instincts how to self-manage. This is a lesson that we adults must help with. I would like to know how many among you play video games on console, PC, smartphone, whatever. Okay, all right, thank you. So practically everybody plays. So the more we open up the possibility to discuss video games, the more the concert player can break away from his habits and put into words what he feels and lives. This is a known approach for the treatment for traumatic shock, for example. The more you can narrate what happened to you, the less you are focused to go back in. You can then take a step back. Do you know that spectators and a player who holds the, the gamepad does not have the same experience? A player will focus his attention on information they need at a timely moment. While spectators, overwhelmed by confusing information, will focus their attention on something they already know, and that often matches with the violent part of a game. So, players and spectators are not on the same level of communication. And they are, both of them are right, but both of them are not talking about the same thing. By creating narrative spaces, we can create bridges and spectators and players can finally find a way to communicate. Of course, there are also traps involved in video games. But uh, we, <laughs> after all, Video games are still a profitable and lucrative industry. But we can equip our youth to identify these traps and prepare them to become adult, responsible adult users. We talked a lot about young generation because we are very concerned for them. But if childhood and teenage are turning points in life, it can be very scary or confusing. If video games offer a safe spot or kind of safe, safe spot where young ones feel they are mastering something, 
we have to understand what they are mastering and how we can propose complementary activities calling for that same mastering feeling. So if we talk a lot about young generation, we must not lose sight that the same question, the same difficulties about video games can also affect adults. Consequently, it is of utmost importance that we work with our youth to prepare them for the challenge to come in their future. This preparation, this coaching, needs the setup of rules, of frameworks, and above all, respect. But let's not forget about the emotional dimension. Let the parent explain to Aiden why he should sleep at night better than during the day. But during the day, let them allow Aiden to express what he feels, so he, to help him feel recognized for who he is. Here is Aiden. He is now 17 years old, and by learning how to talk about his game, he could express that he really likes to be part of a team. His father took some time to watch him play and to understand how the game works. He observed, he noticed that Aiden does not play all that well when he is stressed. So he tell Aiden how martial arts helped him keep focus when he was Aiden's age. So now, on the family fridge, are pinned Aiden high scores just beside his school report. In conclusion, restoring faith and emotional bond has to start with emotional moments. Those will lead to a better self-respect. The more we open up room for our youth to express what they feel and live in front of the screen, the more we help them not only to learn how to self-manage, but also to learn themselves and their emotions. The more we show interest in what interests them, the more we make, make them feel that they are interesting and valued. By giving this recognition, we drive away the risk of excessive gaming. Tonight, in my example, I used video games, but it could be anything else, such as social media. Tell me about your games. Tell me who you are. Thank you.